everyone. I'm Allison Wissanant. I'm the curriculum specialist at Muller Road Middle School in Blythewood, South Carolina. And we are here today to talk to you about how our school has maintained a culture of excellence throughout this pandemic. Hello, and my name is Diane Gilbert. I'm the technology and learning coach here at Muller Road Middle School. And our agenda for today is to discuss the culture at Muller Road Middle School, narrowing our instructional focus, and improving instructional programs. My name is Sean Bishon, I'm the principal of Muller Road Middle School, and I'd like to share some demographic data with regards to Muller Road Middle. Our grade six uh, team is made up of 281 students, approximately 99 in our Leadership Magnet program and 182 in our Mustang Academy program. Grade seven, 286 students, 97 in the Leadership program and 189 students in the Mustang Academy program. In grade eight, we have 333 students, 107 in the Leadership program and 226 in the Mustang Academy program. On each grade level, we have three teams. On our next slide, you'll notice that our school is approximately 900 in total. And our breakdown of ethnicity is as follows. Asian, 1.6%. Black, African-American, 55%. Hispanic, Latino, 7%. Two or more races, 6%. White, 30%. And other, 0.2%. And our transparency rate is 18%. At Mallory and Middle, we make use of our Lotus, and the Lotus is a very important document for us because the Lotus is a mini version of our school improvement plan. You'll notice on the Lotus we have our mission statement, our vision statement, our beliefs, our core values, and our goals. And at the same time, it highlights our focus on joy, learning, character, and community. Everything that we do at Muller and Middle needs to be focused on things that are in our Lotus. Our Lotus helps us, as I've said before, our Lotus helps us guide what we do and defines why we do what we do. It ensures that we narrow our focus and we focus only on those things that are important in order to build and sustain a healthy learning environment and culture at Muller and Middle School. At this point, I'm going to hand over to Alison Wisnett, who'll talk a, little, talk a little bit more about our data and the gains we've made over the last few years. Hi, I'm Alison Wisnett, Curriculum Specialist at Muller Road, and we don't have our 2020 SC Ready data, but this is the latest data that we have from 2019. And as you can see, we had um, success with our three-year trend and growth as much as 10.4% um, in sixth grade ELA, seventh grade 18.9%, grade eight 24.4% growth in those three years. For math, sixth grade we had 7% growth, grade seven 12.3% growth, and grade eight 21.4% growth. This shows that um, the efforts that we have had to really dig down into our data and improve our instructional programs to reach the needs of our students have been paying off. Um, now I'd like to introduce our Teacher of the Year and our Richland II Teacher of the Year, Ms. Trifina Cuffey, who is going to talk to you more about our school culture. Good afternoon, my name is Trifina Cuffey. I am a sixth grade science teacher and eighth grade science teacher at Muller Road. And our mission statement is that Muller Road provides authentic learning in a supportive environment to prepare all students for success. This mission statement guides our actions and interactions in our school. And we use that defined authentic learning this year to focus on rigor and to also come develop a common language and common understanding by what we mean when we talk about authentic learning and rigor. And so this year we focused a lot on those two things as we went through our instructional practices and instructional strategies to ensure that our students were successful. And one of the things that we're doing at Muller Road this year is to narrow our instructional focus so that we can ensure that we're focusing on what is most important and most needed 
by our students at this time. Hello everyone, I'm Ms. Dungo and I'm a 7th grade math teacher. Even during um, this time of pandemic, our school is committed to ensure checking in students' progress by utilizing data. Below here, we have formative assessments, benchmark data, and map data. We also use platforms such as Ingenuity and Master Connect to give quality assessments to our students. And one thing that we did district-wide this year was change our scheduling. Um, and right now, we are in phase two, which is hybrid scheduling. So we have students who are AA learners who come Monday and Tuesday, BB learners come Wednesday and Thursday, and then we have e-learners, people who are being taught um, through dual modality um, on Monday through Thursday. And then for every Friday is an asynchronous day. So teachers post work asynchronously and they also offer um, meetings for instruction or tutoring and extra help. Across our district, we have the same schedule for all middle schools. And as you can see, um, previously our advisory was at the beginning of the day, but now our advisory is in the middle of the day and we've also added enrichment. We'll talk a little bit more about advisory and enrichment in just a minute, um, but enrichment does provide time for our teachers to help fill those gaps that we had from the end of the year of last year. So to ensure holistic development among our students, we prepare advisory lessons for them. For Monday, we give them Mindfulness Monday, which focuses on character education. So the teacher gives lessons from seven mindsets. And we encourage students to set goals for the week based on weekly seven mindset challenge that we get from the seven mindset portal. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Palau. I'm an eighth grade science teacher. On Terrific Tuesdays, the focus is really on supporting the students. Teachers can use this time to assist students through tutoring, extension activities, conferencing with students about grades, which can include missing and incomplete assignments. And students can use this time to email their teachers, ask for help, work on any of those missing and incomplete assignments, or to get ahead if they know they have something that's due coming up, or to simply just drop everything and read. Hello again. To be college ready is one of the goals of our school for our students. So we offer them Wicker Wednesday. It's an advisory lesson that supports students to develop their skills for college readiness. So the lessons are shared by Avid Side team of our school. On Thinking Thursdays, um, it's really just a repeat of what's seen on Terrific Tuesdays. But some teachers may share a schedule with the students and they may say on Tuesdays we're going to do student conferences and on Thursdays we're only going to um, drop everything and read. It's really up to the teacher and what they feel their students need in order to be successful. And um, one of the things that we want to make sure that, especially during this time of the pandemic and ensuring that we are focused on a culture of excellence, is ensuring that we build our students' self-efficacy and so their confidence in knowing what it is that they're doing. And one way that we do that is with, it, with, with our Week of Wednesday, but during that time, students are working on student portfolios. And so they do have those student portfolios where they're able to look at their grades and analyze and even review and give and feedback. They give feedback to each other. They can give feedback. They get feedback from their teachers as well. But it allows them to look at their map scores as well as their grades and also build that self-efficacy, including that self-motivation that we know the students need a lot during this time of the pandemic. And that's one of the things that the students work on during Wicker Wednesday.
Another portion of what we're doing for our enrichment plans um, focuses on during a phase two section of hybrid where some students are face to face and then we have some students who are at home as well. But we use the structure for enrichment to do things such as power lessons. And the power lessons are really good. This is where we use our data and we really focus in on what the students really need. And so if we realize, for example, in this case, the seventh grade ELA's teachers, they realize that that standard may not be have been covered or couldn't be covered due to our shortened schedule that you saw earlier. And during that time, they're focused on recognizing bias. The science teacher may focus on SEPs or stand, um, science and engineering practices, or it could be that the math teachers are focused on something else, or even our related arts teachers are focused on that extra practice that the students may need. One of the things that we're also doing to ensure not only self-efficacy, but also during the time of pandemic is allowing for a flexible schedule during that enrichment time. So for one particular team, they may realize that some of the students may need to work on ELA, but they're allowed to probably go and join a Google Meet of their math teacher so that they can get that extra practice and that extra time that they need. So it's not just those power lessons, but that extra tutoring, um, completing missing work, also working on individual learning plans. So we're not only just helping to bridge that achievement gap, but we're also helping to accelerate our students during that time. One of our focuses this year has been looking at how we can improve our instructional programs. For RTI, this has proven to be a bit difficult because as our eighth grade team lost four teachers to our district E school, um, basically an entire team was moved over to the E school and we only lost 30 students. So we had to very quickly reorganize, restructure, and some of our teachers stepped up to the plate and agreed to teach an extra class during their planning or agreed to teach one class off grade level. But we also had to pull our, our RTI expert, Ms. Christy Stokes, who is a math expert, math teaching expert. And um, in addition to teaching her RTI classes, she agreed to teach some of our high school credit math courses, algebra and geometry. We're grateful for her to do that. It has truly been a concerted effort to team our teachers in such a way to meet the needs of our students. As we moved from virtual instruction to hybrid instruction, the focus has continued to be on continuous improvement, teachers learning from each other, sharing with each other, and we know at Muller Road, um, continuous improvement is everyone's responsibility. We have continued with our data reviews, um, looking at our quarterly failure reports, our quarterly district benchmark data reviews, and our map data reviews, using that data to actually develop action plans, make adjustments to those action plans as needed, monitor the implementation of those action plans, and use data to track that implementation and make improvements. One of the things that our Asynchronous Fridays has provided is the opportunity for professional development in the morning. Now, asynchronous, I'm sure you know, I just wanna say that that just means that the students are working on work at home and they're not being actually led through this work by this teacher at that time. So it frees up that time for us to meet and for teachers to spend time with students on meeting their needs in very specific ways. So the PD that we offer to teachers is based on a couple of things. First of all, it's based on teacher needs and we differentiate this instruction with a PD library that we're gonna show you in a minute. And we also base it on whole school needs. There are things that come up based on the data that we need to address and that everybody in the school needs to understand. So this is our PD library. And these are some items that teachers can dive into based on their own interest and their need. And if we take a look at one of our selections, for example, AVID, which is a whole school and a whole district initiative. What happens is that a palette comes up.
and teachers are able to choose what area best meets their needs in order to understand whatever it is we're talking about. They then reflect on their learning in a learning log. And this learning log is wonderful because we can understand what their needs are, how this information has impacted them, and we can also use it to inform further PD. At this time, I'd like to thank our team, Alison Wisnant, Diane Gilbert, Gabriela Palau, Trifina Cuffey, and Catherine Tungle, for helping showcase all the wonderful things being done at Mullerwood Middle School. At Mullerwood Middle School, our motto is one team, one direction. And in a nutshell, what it means is all of us working independently as part of a team to ensure the success of all our students. So I want to thank you for taking the time to view our presentation today. And if you want to follow us, please follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, our relevant information is on the slide. Thank you once again for viewing our presentation and enjoy the rest of your conference experience. <laughs>